Release commanded. Station copies. The latching end effector, or the hand of the Canadarm2 robotic arm, is in the process of unlatching or letting go of the Cygnus cargo spacecraft. Snares open. Begin monitoring for drift out. copies. and the release of the Cygnus spacecraft supporting Northrop Grumman's 17th commercial resupply mission to the International Space Station is confirmed at 6.07 a.m. Central Time while the space station was flying over the Pacific Ocean. The pin has exited the lead. Houston copies. Proceeding to back away. Vision copies. The Cygnus cargo spacecraft is now working on backing away from the space station's robotic arm. Coming up next is the initiation of a departure burn to move the spacecraft away from the International Space Station. This burn is scheduled to fire for about three minutes and carry Cygnus through the approach ellipsoid. At this point, joint operations will end and Northrop Grumman will be in full control of the spacecraft. Back away in progress. Vision copies. And back away has begun. You can see some lights on the top of your screen. I know it's a dark view, but that is the Cygnus cargo spacecraft slowly drifting away from the space station's robotic arm. Since station sees us at 4.5 meters clear, 1.5 meters clear. You think copy is one decimal five. Houston, we see us 4.5 meters clear, proceeding with vehicle departure. Houston concurs. 
The view that you're looking at now is a camera at the end of the space station's Canadarm2 robotic arm looking at the Cygnus cargo spacecraft as it backs away. Cygnus depart, commanded. And back away complete. I'll be back away complete. Station Houston, Cygnus departure burn is in progress. Monitor departure burn, step five in 1.602. Station copies pressure burn in progress, monitoring per step five. The purpose of the departure burn, of course, is to move Cygnus away from the International Space Station, but it's also to move the vehicle through the keep-out sphere and the proto-ellipsoid. The keep-out sphere is an imaginary sphere 200 meters in radius around the space station. It's one of the safety zones we talked about earlier uh, that applies to visiting vehicles either arriving or, in this case, departing the space station. Before moving into the keep-out sphere, the spacecraft must be configured where it would not cross this imaginary boundary again for at least four orbits, even if the spacecraft lost all maneuvering in the unlikely event of an emergency. The Cygnus cargo spacecraft is now reaching about 100 meters away from the International Space Station. Station Houston, for exercise constraints, uh, we are no longer in the no exercise constraints, and the T2 constraint will lift in approximately 20 minutes. Station copies, we are outside of the no exercise constraint band and the no T2 exercise constraint band lifts in about 20 minutes.
station in Houston for Cygnus. Cygnus departure burn complete. Perform step six in one decimal six zero two. And for your information, Cygnus has exited the two hundred meter keep out sphere. Okay, we copy that Cygnus has exited the keep out sphere and we'll go in step six. Jackie Mahaffey, our Capcom today just communicated with astronauts Bob Hines and Jessica Watkins monitoring today's operation that Cygnus has completed its departure burn and it was nominal and it has effectively moved the spacecraft out of the keep out sphere. Cygnus is now over 300 meters away from the space station and if you remember the keep out sphere is an imaginary sphere 200 meters in radius around the space station. So Cygnus has made its way outside of the keep out sphere, meaning that for this imaginary boundary for at least four orbits, the spacecraft will not, even if it lost all maneuvering, it would not cross this imaginary boundary. The next milestone that we're approaching is the approach ellipsoid, this time pizza box in shape. It's a three-dimensional shape, uh, four kilometers by two kilometers by two kilometers. It's one, another one of the safety zones we have in place. One of the key differences is that the approach ellipsoid, if a vehicle out, is that if vehicles outside of it have to be on what we call a 24 hour safe free drift trajectory. So we know that the spacecraft would not cross into the approach ellipsoid for at least 24 hours, again, in the unlikely event of an emergency. And that's the next milestone that, then that's the next milestone that we see today.